Welcome back to All Right Podcast here. You have Elijah, alongside Grant. You know, we're going to dive right into, uh, you know, Michigan football. It's game week. Michigan versus TCU, uh, you know, first game of the college football playoffs, kicking off um, the 31st at 4 p.m., I believe, down in Arizona. You know, you know, I'm super excited for the game, ready to see the boys go out there and play. You know, I'm kind of going to throw it over to you. Just wanted to see what your initial thoughts are, you know, when we're, uh, you know, Wolverines versus the Horn Frogs here. Yeah. Uh, no, I say initial thoughts are positive. I feel like these last few weeks felt like forever for some reason, but I'm glad, you know, game week's finally here. Um, yeah, but I'll say overall, I mean, I'm just glad to see where our team is at. Watch a lot of the, you know, press conferences and like Harbaugh's interviews kind of during this week and everybody just seems very locked in and just, you know, still having, I love hearing about how last year's loss is like heavy on the mind. It's been heavy on the mind for the last year. Um, so I'm just, excited to just hear about the team just really wanting to, you know, come in this year, this time around and really put their stamp on the playoff. And I think they have a really good opportunity to do so. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, you know, I just listening to what you're saying, listening to them, I keep hearing uh, just common words, you know, this is a business trip, uh, you know, no fun, you know, locking in. I heard a lot of the players are, uh, you know, opting out of things that aren't mandatory involving the bold itself. Um, you know, just kind of more of a, you know, a blue collar mentality uh, when approaching this. And, you know, I, I like all everything about that. So, right. um, you know, I, I think, you know, the experience of last year, you know, I'm not sure what percentage of the team it, it came back, but I'm sure it's a very large percent in year over year. Uh, you know, they've seen this spot like last year um, in, in the college football playoffs, you know, kind of got the brakes beat off of them more or less a little bit. Um, yeah. not even come back a little more hungry. It's not, you know, you don't have to come in as wide eyed. Uh, you've been there before and now it is, it can be taken more serious. And, you know, some of the, the all of it can be taken away because, uh, you've been there before and now it's time to actually, um, you know, win a game and, and you know, in, in kind of that next, that next hurdle and get over that next thing. So that's kind of what I'm looking for the team to do, uh, you know, go out there and just fight for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm right there with you. Um, so no, I think I think a good place to start is to kind of talk about the um, offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, just kind of pick your brain at it first. You know, what are you you know looking at when it comes to like you know major keys? I mean, obviously you watch Michigan play a ton of football this year. You can probably kind of understand what they're going to be doing, what the you know the goal is going to be on offense. But you know, what are you looking to see? What do you think will be the keys to success? Yeah, no, I think it starts with, uh, you know, the big boys up front, uh, you know, the number one offensive line unit, again, for back-to-back -back seasons, uh, very hard to do. A couple of All-Americans on there, whether first or second team. So, you know, I think just leaning on them big boys up front, uh, you know, hopefully, um, you know, right before we hopped on, we were talking about the, you know, the possibility of TCU staying in the 3-3-5 uh, for majority of the game. And I think that, that would be a dream come true for us. Um, and I think, I think regardless, you have to lean on the big boys up front. Um, and I, you know, just a couple of stats here, uh, you know, TCU gives, um, gives up 150 rushing yards on the ground. So, you know, more or less, but we get average 243 on the ground. So I think, you know, we are going to, um, impose our will and it starts with them up front play action, um, big, our big plays downfield. A lot of that is going to come through, um, flowing through the offensive line in the offense in, uh, Donovan Edwards. And, um, you know, even JJ on the ground, if he can get some things, you know, nothing else to save yourself for now at this point, <laughs> uh, right. so, you know, to go out there and lay it all on the line. And he has been doing that, to, as you've noticed, um, as, uh, you know, late November college football championship game, you know, he's, uh, he's been taken off a little more. So, mm -hmm. you know, those are all things that I think we need, um, other than the timely throws, obviously, you know, um, whether JJ throws for 300 yards or not, I think we can win but he has to hit the timely throws when we need them. Uh, yes. Third downs when it's, you know, third and six, third and five, whatever it may be, um, you know, he has to hit those. He has to stress the defense to some degree, hit a couple of them, you know, uh, 20, 25 plus yards and, um, and just give them something to think about. But if he can do that, I, you know, they, the, the game is ours. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think that's, that's going to be a key because I feel like <clears> – <throat> What kind of, I think what I just kind of imagine happening is really just, you know, it's establishing a run per usual, right? Just really, you know, and maybe not throwing it unless we like really need to, to kind of start, start things off. But you're right. When it comes to those, you know, third and five, third and seven, you know, we'll definitely see a couple of those. 
um, you know, throughout the game. So he needs to you know, either hit people, you know, right, you know, right in the chest, you know, make the right read. Because I will say that 335 is more built to like cover all the field um, and just more to like defend the pass. Um, and the secondary, TCU secondary is solid. And if I'm not mistaken, they have Jim Thorpe Award winner. Um, yeah, I think it's a corner or a safety. Um, he yeah, won that. Um, I mean, they, I just read some stuff about how you know, well they tackle in space and just they cover well, you know, they don't, you know, they do a good job of kind of keeping everything in front of them. So I think, you know, I feel like we're going to, you know, just do what we do and just, you know, kind of build our identity on the ground, you know, run the ball 40, 50, 55 times, whatever it takes. But when JJ's number is called, you know, to make that key play to keep a drive alive or, you know, whatever that situation looks like, he just got to make sure to stay within himself and just continue to do what he's been doing, you know, not turn the ball over you know, make the smart read. Um, and yeah, it, the last few weeks um, before this break, you know, he was hitting people on the money. Um, you know, I, I know his confidence is getting up in a passing game and uh, yeah, just continue to do what he does and not extend too much out of himself. Right. right. Yeah. No, limit, limited the negative plays and, um, and the game can be ours, you know, and it, yeah, that's a major thing for him, but he, I think we're, we're seeing him come into his own and this could be one of those games where, uh, you know, he can really slingshot himself into uh, whatever conversation that may be, you know, whether it's a uh, future NFL quarterback or uh, best Big Ten quarterback or, you know, one of the better Michigan quarterbacks of all time. I think all that can happen if you win this game here. And uh, he, we see he still has a lot of football left to go. But um, I think also him being thrown into the Wolves last year, um, you know, I think he made a few things happen. He also got hit in the mouth a lot. Um, but I think, you know, that Georgia defense is was much more stout than whatever he's going to see to, uh, this coming up weekend versus TCU, and he has thirteen some odd games under his belt of more uh, composure and experience. So, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, uh, we're we're in a great spot here. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it feels like you know this one of those situations where you know backfield a little banged up. You know, they got us all the way to this point. Um, you know, I'm not saying got to throw it all on his shoulders, but it is kind of turns with them scenarios where. You know, it's, it's really just kind of on his shoulders to make that play. Um, you know, I, they they going to do, I'm sure they're going to try to do what Ohio did and just, you know, put eight, nine, ten in the box and, you know, might see a couple zero blitz, you know, a couple zero blitz and, you know, just doing some, you know, stuff to where they were just trying to put us in third and medium, third and long. And that's where he's going to have to shine how he did the last, you know, couple weeks of the, se- of the regular season. And I think you will. So that was something that I wrote in my little comment section here uh, was, um, you know, the video that was dropped into, you know, our, our group chat. And that was the I believe Sonny Dykes, the coach saying, you know, we're going to basically go full force sell out on the run and try to stop the run. Um, it, that's almost, you know, seeing what happened to Ohio State, I would I would think <laughs> I would think that's almost like kind of like blowing smoke almost like I, I can't imagine that's actually their real game plan to, to that degree. Um, yeah. You know, if you're going to be the first team to go out and attempt it, maybe you can say that. But um, if you um, have seen what a rival did, um, a perennial powerhouse, and and that completely backfired and blew up in their face, I can't mm-hmm. imagine you're going to roll out and do it the next week, uh, you know, a couple of weeks down the road. So that's something that kind of stood out to me. Another thing just to kind of – and I know we have a couple other points, but another thing was um, how many close games they had. And, you know, a lot yeah. of people kind of – a lot of people are um, saying, you know, they can pull it out in the end, and that might be that might be something that um, that is uh, that's true. But mm-hmm. I, I look at it kind of; it could be a negative. I think I think it said they had six games decided by seven points um, in each game. You know, so they, a touchdown game, um, and that, that's that's a big swing from barely making the playoffs to maybe a nine and three season to you know where you are now. Um, mm-hmm. You know, obviously, we had a, a few type uh, game or two that was tougher than it needed to be in there. But uh, week in and week out, we went out and you know put the boot down more or less. And, you know, right. we, we didn't crawl through the season. Um, you know, so you know that's something else that kind of that kind of stood out to me. Yeah, and to piggyback off of that, because I was going to actually bring up that same thing. I mean, you look at some of those wins. You know, they were down like twenty four to seven. Oklahoma State, who was ranked at the time, but they came back and won that double overtime. Oklahoma State finished season six and six. You know, you look at Kansas State. Um, Kansas State, they were already to their backup quarterback when they played TCU earlier in the year. TCU still found a way to get down 10. Then the backup quarterback got hurt. They had to bring in the third string, and that's where they started to kind of mount their comeback. Um, 
you know, even even that Texas game. I mean, we talked before we jumped on here. A lot of people are trying to, you know, say that we're just like we just we're, we're mirrored to Texas. Like we're, they think we're just like Texas. And you know, that team that's a seven and five football team. They play tomorrow night at like nine. Um, and you know that is another scenario to where um, another one to even throw out there was how they had to like beating Baylor. Baylor played a week and a half ago. Six and six football team. They had to literally run their field goal unit out with like. 10 under 10 seconds left in the game to kick a field goal to win that game by two. So, yeah, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm confident in Michigan, just like you are. And you kind of hear those things, how they've been kind of keeping things close. They've also been being kind of lucky. Um, so I think I am confident that if we just do what we need to do and just stay out of our own way. Um, we should be able to handle business on the offensive side. Yeah, no, I agree. And, um, you know, I think, I think, yeah, offensive side is, um, you know, something that it's odd that I feel uh, I do kind of agree with you that I feel a little more confident in, in that unit than I do in the defensive unit. Just mm-hmm. saying, how I think, you know, um, the clash of the two different conferences, clash of, uh, you know, identities and yep. what, you know, what you kind of believe in and, you know, kind of the root of who you are or com- couldn't be night and day compared um, our uh, Big Ten uh, compared down to their conference down there. It's just night and day. So, right. you know, I, uh, you know, I don't know what how you feel about the defense. You know, kind of what are yes. you know what are the keys to um, going out there? Do you know? Do you how how much confidence do you have in that unit? Um, you know, kind of how do you see that game playing out? Yeah, I mean they got they got some players over there. They got a running back. Um, I think I saw he's had a rushing touchdown in every single game this season, thirteen hundred yards. Um, he's you know projected first you know late first second round pick as of right now. Um, I know they, you know, they wait on every opportunity to try to unleash him and see what he can do. Um, I, I feel like we should be able to, you know, keep the run, you know, kind of like bottle that up. I think the thing that concerns me more than anything is um, Max Duggan, how he can run. I remember we played Maryland. We were there live. And granted, two were probably a little quicker, a little smaller, a little harder to get a hold of. But we, we did have some issues with that. You know, he was able to keep plays alive. That was really the last close game we had <laughs> um you know or besides you know Penn, or the uh, Illinois game um but he was able to extend drives you know extend plays um I mean they you know pretty much able to get up and down the field um I think as far as that we'll just have to yeah limit like oh, like we just said to JJ extending drives on third and long I mean I don't know how you know their plans of you know spying them you know, whatever that kind of looks like. I saw that we were repping um, RJ Moden at linebacker all week this week. So I don't know if that's maybe a plan, you know, usually play safety. I don't know if they plan on maybe just having him kind of be down there, just more athleticism from the secondary standpoint to kind of be a little more in that box, but um, that, and then they got speed, you know, it's big 12. The one thing they do, they do have speed. They got six, four receiver, you know, that can, you know, go up and get a jump ball. That tends to kind of be our kryptonite, you know, here and there. And they also got, you know, a guy um, that runs like a 4-2 that can, I've seen take jet sweep 75 yards a couple of different times. Now, granted, these are against, you know, some defenses, you know, not the greatest defenses. You know, we got a top five defense. So I do feel like we're prepared to, you know, bottle some of this stuff up. But there are, all it takes is a couple of deep plays or a couple of big plays to kind of swing the momentum of a game. Right. Yeah, no, so I would say, <clears throat> going through the gauntlet of the Big Ten, you 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 see many different types of offenses, many different teams, teams built different ways. You know, you got Maryland, uh, like you said, Tua back there, sling it all over the place, can run when he needs to, have, have le- athletes, good athletes around. Uh, you know, and then you go play, uh, you know, Penn State, big-ass quarterback, fairly mobile, athletes all over. Uh, you know, then, you know, just week in and week out, you know, you test it. and I, you know, uh, Purdue through, try to throw the ball for, do they did move the ball on us a decent, a decent amount. Um, but it was a more of a bend don't break mentality. We <laughs> turn the ball over, uh, or we got to turn over, uh, made them kick field goals. <laughs> made them kick field goals. We made them look out of sync at times, disrupted and sacked their quarterback many times. Um, you know, so I think that's the kind of thing that, um, that we have to mirror is just take all that experience throughout the season and then and hone in on this. But, mm-hmm. you know, I think this, this defense is very, um, you know, battle tested, you know, I'll, yep. say that. I'll say that. And, and just looking at this, 
Oh, I forgot what I wrote now. TCU has been sacked 24, given up 24 sacks on offense this year. Um, you know, that's something that I think is is uh, something I, I can see us using to our advantage. You know, getting back mm-hmm. to that quarterback, disrupting them, and, yeah, they're going to move the ball on us a little bit. Um, just try to limit the big plays, limit the ridiculous, you know, 50, 60-yard bombs, um, you know, and and I think we'll be able to keep them out of sync enough to where that we're, you know, it, it kind of mirrors that Purdue game where maybe he's putting up yards to a certain degree, but, you know, they're, they're empty calorie yards. Uh, they're not they're not doing much. Um, you know, they're already behind behind 14, 17 points, and we're just letting them throw it around, move the ball. Um, right. And, and that's kind of how I envision this happening. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're star-studded. I mean, not star-studded, but athletes all over, speed all over. Um, you know, watching our highlight tape, they do look phenomenal. But I think it is, like you said, more of who are you playing week in and week out. Um, mm-hmm. And I don't think their receiver core is better than Penn, uh, um, Ohio State's. And um, I know their running backs are not better than some of the ones we played in the Big Ten. Uh, so I think our, our defensive line uh, can win this one for us with disrupting the quarterback, getting them, uh, getting them down, getting them in awkward positions, whether it's, you know, the second and longs, third and longs, and, uh, mm-hmm. and where, we're, where we can make them completely one-dimensional. Yeah. Yeah, for what it's worth, too, man, I mean, you know, I think one something that's – not really talk about a whole lot because everybody kind of benefits from his health. I mean, mm-hmm. now we got Mike Morris back. You know, I think he was lead, you know, leading the team in sacks. So looking forward to just kind of seeing him coming off that edge. Um, and, our, you know, our, our defense, like you said, they're battle tested. They had our backs against the wall. I mean, we was blocking. We had to block field goals in Indiana. You know, we was chasing Talia, uh, took up a little all over the field. Um, I mean, yeah, I had to go to the shoe and see, you know, the one of the top quarterbacks in next year's draft. Um, and then, yeah, we've seen, like you said, you, you hit it right on the head. We've seen everything. So I just think it's, it's a matter of just not, you know, just standing, you know, standing what, you know, what we do and just not getting, um, you know, just not falling for window dressing. Cause that's one thing that happens in a lot of these games too. People start doing triple reverses, you know, whatever it kind of looks like to just, you know, quarterback, you know, running back pass, wide receiver pass, whatever they can to kind of do to, to get an advantage. And, um, I feel like if we just continue to play that, you know, aggressive Bama don't break defense, um, we should be able to keep them in check for the most part. Yeah, no, I I completely agree with that. I, I think I think uh, something I wrote down was avoid this sh- avoid. Man, that's the dog here. <laughs> Shut up. Uh, avoid the track meet and you know make it a make it more of a street fight. And yep. Just kind of mark it all up. You know, we're not going to be able to if you know if it's getting into the sixties. You know, that's something that we have no business in. You know, I think just kind mm-hmm. of, you know, uh, make it a street fight, dirty it up, slow it up with the run game, uh, you, you know, impose our will. You know, we're uh, – I was looking. Um, I think, you know, we're, we're just – they have some some big boys on there. I'm not going to lie. I, I, when, when looking, I thought we were just going to be much bigger across the board. We, we are not like I thought we would be. But we mm-hmm. are bigger across the board. Uh, we're, we play more physical. That Ben Herbert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> X Factor. That's the Harbaugh said. Yeah, hey. No, I agree with you, bro. So, yeah, I think just just leaning in on all of that, you know, I think I think you know, yeah, I'm just gonna jump out and say I think I see Michigan in the championship game. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think many would disagree with you. I think it's really just we just got to make sure we go in there, we play our game, and not get in our own way. I think that's mm-hmm. just in the day, you know, what it is, pretty clear cut and dry. Uh, I feel like. You know, like I said earlier, like JJ, this is really just, I mean, kind of be his book, you know, coming out party. Like, you know, every, you know, I know he's been starting the season, you know what I'm saying? Kind of kind of been working him in, you know, trust him more and more as the week goes on. But yeah, I mean, it's I think we have an opportunity to me has a perfect opportunity to just continue to do what he's been doing the last few weeks and just play, you know, play some high level um, football. And um, yeah, I mean, just seeing how he's been, you know, talking and just responding to a lot of different things. Um I feel like that's really at the end of the day, um, it's going to be on his shoulders. So, it is. It is. You, and, and you're not lying about that. You know, just um, the way he's been eased in. He played big moments last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, you know, they met the last season. I mean, arguably, maybe had a play that cost his first Michigan State. Uh, you know, came in. Uh, you know, made time to play versus Ohio State. Got the dub. 
played a little bit, a little bit of real time, mostly cleanup duty versus Georgia. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, I think he's just been very well, you know, eased into this. And now it is time. And I think, like you said, if he just does exactly what he has been doing, <clears throat> and we yep. get to know, you know, the sky's the limit for him. And uh, you know, so I, I, I view that in just in a couple of things. I'm, um, you know, Loveland. I think he's going to continue to, uh, you know, he'll he'll have another come out party. You know that. Uh, snag in the end zone in the big 10 championship double coverage i think his, his head is probably huge walking around the confidence he has as a freshman uh, mm-hmm. you know, um you know kind of still in shoemaker shine uh eric hall's already gone so you know i think he's he's kind of he knows this is his spot he can continue to shine and uh it's the same thing with other people you know i think ronnie bell has had the depths of the team or been with the team through the depths of hell Torres achilles first play last year or first game last year, you know, I think he he's hungry for more. Uh, you know, I think so. Just all that rolled into one. You know, I think. Yeah. I think I think we're we're forced to be reckoned with, bro. Like for real. Then we got then we got the Don. Yeah. And I already I already know I went on record a couple of times. This ain't no disrespect to Blake because he got he is who he is. I just yeah. Donovan, he, he, <laughs> I just think he got a whole different level, man. I mean, I feel like <clears throat> I mean, well, they called a sixty yard touchdown last year through a seventy five yard touchdown last year four or five, six plays of 50 yards or more this year, caught through four, uh, you know, uh, touchdowns this year, ran in about four or five more. I mean, I, I mean, he said, you know, he's shown that as the game, you know, it kind of, that our whole identity works in his favor as the game starts to go on and on, you know, you know, I just see him get a two yard game, one yard game, four yard game, five yard game. And then come mid third, late fourth quarter, he's busting off 50, 60 yards, making people look foolish and, um, I do expect to have, you know, him to have a big game, you know, 20, 25 carries um, and really, you know, trying to ride him that first half and just kind of set, set things up for the rest of the games. So that's somebody I do think will uh, have a have a big game, have a big uh, college football playoff as well. Yeah, no, I, I agree. He he is one of those guys. He just got he has to get his carries in chunks where uh, so he can make something happen. You know, because if you if you just give him a few carries here and there, it, you know, you might. You might catch one of them 60 yarders, but probably not. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I think I do think he's a momentum a momentum back, and um, you know, if they're if they're going to be foolish enough to stay in that three three five, I think he won't even be getting touched. He's six seven yards downfield. So yeah. Um, and then and then after that, I mean, you've seen what he can do one on one with the linebacker, with the safety, uh, anybody a little bit uh you know slow on their feet or you know you know nails to the ground, you know mm-hmm. he he might be to to the distance there. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, I don't know. And also, I think with this much time, you know, there's no telling what Harbaugh can cook up. There's yep. no telling what, um, you know, what, um, you know, little tricks they may have. And, you know, yeah, we have a lot, a lot, a lot, I don't know, a lot of momentum, bro. I just feel, I feel, I, I really want to come out here and talk more crazy than this, but I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel you. I think, and I think too, just like, like I talked about earlier, you just love the mentality, love what you're hearing from the team. You know, they're opting out of a lot of things. You know, on the flip side, you know, I've been looking at TCU social media a little bit. You know, they they showing off the new gear they got for Christmas. And and no knock to them. You know, much respect, you know, respect, you know, definitely respect the opponent. You can just tell one of them. You showing off the stock and stuffers? You what? You said they're showing off the stock and stuffers? Yeah. They, <laughs> one of the advantages, though, is being there for the first time and being there for the second time. Like, that really just, you know, they – I mean, I'm sure they coach do whatever he can do to, you know, get them ready too. But I, you know, I, I just when you, when it comes to you know Michigan, I do feel like they understand, you know, what this, you know, what the situation is, you know, what this moment is, and you know what they can potentially do. Um, so I just feel like they'll they'll be pre- uh, prepared. So we'll throw a couple of score predictions. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I do think. You know, like I said before, I do think they'll be able to move the ball a little bit, whether some empty calorie yard, uh, yards, uh, empty calorie points near the end of the game. Uh, but all in all, I think it's going to be, you know, like I was, I'll give it a 40 27 game. Okay. Uh, you know, I think the Michigan going to come out, uh, you know, just have one of those games where I think, I think we'll get, we'll get, we'll get the momentum early um, and then business. And just get the business that way, you know, that's yep. kind of. Get it, you know, let the dogs loose early and then, uh, you know, sit back and watch it happen. Yeah. 40 27. 
Yeah, I'm uh, I'm right now, world. I'm, I'm I'm doing more. I'm probably like a 37, 24. Um, I feel like you know, first quarter, um, we'll get their best punch. You know, I can see us definitely going into half. You know, 20 to 17, whatever that kind of looks like. And I think that second half is, you know, that'll be real telling because I, you know, they they do a great job of coming back when they're down. Um, you know, we do a good job of you know drowning people and you know taking the life out of them in that second half so it'd be interesting to see how both those you know how those uh different things kind of clash um in that second half but i do think we'll a little closer to what people think i think it'll be like a 10 10 to 13 point game yeah no for sure um no i agree i'm i'm excited for this game this weekend you know ready to see uh you know a little bit of taste of the championship you know get through this game Mm -hmm. um you know i think the sky's the limit so i agree yeah you anything else for the people? That's all I got, man. Go blue. You know, hopefully we're back with y'all um, next week <clears throat> talking about the national championship game. Yes, sir. Go blue.